Welcome to It's Just Lunch. It is a monthly program with AARP and Elder Source where we bring you great information and fun. I am Justine Conley, Associate State Director for AARP First Coast. Hello, and I'm Linda Levin, the CEO of Elder Source, the Area Agency on Aging and Aging and Disability Resource Center for Northeast Florida. And each month, AARP and Elder Source team up to share with you an educational and often entertaining topics. We have fun and we keep you, uh, we help keep you uh, connected to important information that keeps you informed, happy, and hopefully healthy. We have a great guest today who is here to shatter and untangle some myths about common legal questions. I'd like to welcome today Megan Wall, who is the managing attorney with the Jacksonville Area Legal Aid. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this. And Megan, we are so grateful that you are here. And because it's such a great topic, we don't want to take any more time. We're going to jump into the questions, all right? So here's our first question. And so we want to encourage you, if you are live with us, that you put your question in the chat and we will try to get your question answered. And you can meet us on AARP uh, uh, Facebook Live, Elder Source Facebook Live, or on YouTube. So here's our first question. So Megan, um, oftentimes we've got a, we, we hear the question, um, so when a person dies without a will, does the property go to the state? How many times have you heard that question? <laughs> I have heard that so many times. I'm going to get a t-shirt that says, it does not go to the state. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> Do you think that would make my point? Just a big billboard right on my shirt. And then people can ask me what it means in the street. <laughs> well, <that's> <laughs> what <laughs> happened? Most people die without a will. Um, and even if they think they have a will, sometimes the will's set aside, the will's no good. They wrote it on a napkin themselves. They, they don't know. In any event, what happens if you die without a will is that the statute gives it to your spouse and your kids. And if you don't have spouse and kids, it finds a family member. It goes up and down, grandparents, grandkids, brothers and sisters, cousins. It's got a little like it always goes to family, unless you are like the dinosaur last of your family and no one can find anyone related to you. Other than that, no worries. In fact, about 99% of the wills I see say, I want everything to go to my spouse and kids. And okay. I don't want to what? tell them, how much did you pay for that? But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have another question. So if it is a person responsible for their spouse's debts or medical bills and credit cards when the person dies. Oh, thank you for asking me this. This is one of the saddest things when people call me after they have paid debts they were not even responsible for. Wow. I have widows, yeah, widows that call me, they're in foreclosure and I say, "Why did you mortgage the house when you were 80 years old?" And they say, "Well, my spouse died and there were all these medical bills and credit cards and the guy on the phone told me I had to mortgage the house and pay the bills. Oh, my Lord. I just take a deep breath at that point and we just deal with the foreclosure because at that point, there's no point telling her. But I want everyone to listen. You are not responsible for anyone's debts but your own. No one's, not your spouse, not your adult children, not your friends. It, literally, you're only responsible for your own debts. And if you have any question, call first. Call us first. We are here to answer those kind of questions. And it's a, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? So if you get in early, I can stop you from mortgaging your house, which is a lot harder to get out of. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So tell us again who you're with, Megan, because I want people to know how important it is to call first. There are resources out there before you get into trouble. So tell us again, before I get to my next question, who you're with. I'm with Jacksonville Area Legal Aid, but there is a legal aid anywhere in the state. I think this is an AARP statewide. There are, there are legal aids in every single county in the whole United States. Call first, get your answers and known. There's also a senior legal helpline. Lawyer standing by on the phone waiting to answer that quick question for you. There's a lot of other resources too, but those would be the good ones to remember. 
And so, and the reason why we do this let's do lunch is it's this quick and it's easy, but it gets some of your questions answered. So here's our next question, a little bit about more about wills. I understand that the best way to leave bank accounts and assets to children or to others or to spell it out or our wishes in a will. Now that sounds logical. It does sound logical. And people think that all the time. The thing is, if you leave it all in a will and you don't put that pay on death beneficiary right on your bank account, it has to go through probate. And that's expensive. Oh. So sometimes people come in and say, my mom has an account, her name only, it has a thousand dollars. And I say, well, it's going to take $2,000 to get it out. <laughs> so what you should do, yeah, but don't put kids right on the account. What I always say is go to the bank and put a pay on death beneficiary and put all five kids or whatever. And also do the same thing on your life insurance, your 401k, your, you know, whatever you've got that's money resources. Money doesn't go through probate well at all. Now, homes, sure, no worries, no worries, but not cash. And talk to a lawyer first and they can help you plan those things out. I love it. I'm, I love this uh, Let's Do Lunch because I learn something every time. Pay on death benefit. Ah, mm, okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Go do it when you get off the show. <laughs> Call your <Yeah>. bank. <laughs> so um, another question. Did we talk about power of attorneys yet? Not uh, yet. Do that. What if, uh, what about if someone has a power of attorney over you? Can they put you in a nursing home and take your home and belongings? Heavens no. A durable power of attorney says that if you lose capacity, that person can help you in an emergency just until you regain capacity. So my durable power of attorney is my spouse. My backup is my mother-in-law. If I'm under during surgery, they can call the shots on whatever, healthcare decisions, whatever decisions. It is not power over me. It is not power over anyone. And for people to say, oh, I have a power of attorney and I'm calling the shots now, one, joke's on them, just revoke it. <laughs> so call up, like, boom, you, you want to see how much power you don't have? <laughs> anyone who's pushing around their power um, that they don't have under law, People need to reassert. That's what I tell seniors. You reassert yourself pretty quickly and say, whoa, 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 boundaries, right? I don't become the child and you become the parent just because now you have this document or Megan Wall did this document for me. If you don't understand what you're signing, you need to call lawyers back or call the helpline. But really what you should do is make sure that nobody is your durable power of attorney that's trying to call the shots or decide your life. You know, they should be there to help. They should be next to you as caregivers and assistants, but they should not be your bosses and they shouldn't be putting you in doing what they think is best, even if they have a good intention. Well, I think that's very important, Megan. I think the message of empowering, being empowered, you still have that uh, power over yourself and such an important message for our seniors. And I'll ask one more question. And, and Justine, if you have one after that, let's talk Absolutely. about homeowner concerns. Uh, your mortgage company cannot foreclose on you if you are elderly or with a disability or a widow. What about homeowners associations? Can they foreclose if you don't pay your homeowners association fees? The truth is that in a foreclosure situation, that means a true uh, entity that has an actual secured interest on your home, not a credit card or something, but a mortgage or a homeowner's association fee or some kind of home repair that's attached. Those entities can all take your home in a foreclosure, even if you're elderly, even if you're disabled, even if you're going to be homeless, you've got to, as soon as you get a whiff that something is wrong or threatening your home, you've got to call legal aid. Do not wait till it's already sold. <laughs> Do not put your head in the sand. Early intervention is best. And there's lots of ways to work with people. We save, I don't know how many homes. Jim, our, my director will know, but we save count, uh, unbelievable amounts of homes every year by early intervention, refinancing debt, doing things like that, and keeping people safe so that they're in their home until the day they die. Wonderful. And I know too that oftentimes when you get afraid, you just want to shut down and act like it's not real. And then in those situations, the sit it becomes even worse and it's escalated into 
now you have to take dire, uh, dire means to try to get it taken care of. So we want to, and with this, let's do lunch. We want to encourage you when you get information or different kinds of uh, things that's coming to you that might be a, uh, a, a issue, call legal aid and they will let you know if they can help or how they can help. And I know this is not a commercial, but call someone to get you some help. So here's our next question. With the current eviction moratorium going on, even if you are served with the eviction lawsuit from the court, you don't have to reply or do anything because there is no way to be evicted right now. Myth. That is not true. I'm glad you're doing the myth busters. You've got to call and do what you need to do. Right now, a lot of people just think that, like you said, they can do the ostrich thing. Just put their head in the sand, hope it's all going to go away. You know, it doesn't work for medical conditions. It doesn't work for legal conditions. You can't just ignore things and they go away. You've got to, but there are protections right now. If you call and do an, you know, a CDC declaration, a Centers for Disease Control declaration, put people on notice. I've had a COVID related loss of income. You know, be what, you know, help me out. Go to the rental assistance programs, call legal aid, make sure we work with those landlords, hopefully before they've sued for eviction. But even after, if they've sued, come in again, we can start pushing, pushing back. Let's give them time to catch up. There's rental assistance on the way. Everyone just slow this train on down. We're all in this together, right? Let's keep our community stable. It's a very important message. I really appreciate you getting this word out. You don't just do nothing. <laughs> you actively slow the train down with our assistance and the community's assistance. Actively slow the train down. I think that's a quote <laughs> for today. Actively slow the train down. I think I think another good message, um, Megan, that you just said, I don't know if you realize, but doing nothing is doing something. Because doing nothing, you're allowing something else to happen instead. And this is about, again, I go back to empowerment. You, know, you have to take action, even if it's to call somebody for help. Don't let your pride get in the way. Don't be embarrassed, you know, because you couldn't pay a bill. Talk to somebody, be empowered, get the help, do something. Yes. Um, and, and, we, and there's help there for you. So I think that's a great message. And, you know, I always tell people there's nothing that combats fear more than knowledge. You know, knowledge is empowering. You know, I come into the Council on Aging and I give my lectures and people all look so afraid and I say, at least I woke you up, but now you know, and now you know where to go. And so you won't be sitting there in the dark afraid. You know who to call, you know where to go, you know we're gonna get right back to you. And then you're gonna have the resources you need to make that good decision. I was gonna do a skit. Um, I thought it would be fun sometime to do a skit on the, the senior who's getting a call from a creditor who doesn't know their rights right? We're going to throw you in jail. We're going to take your house. We're going to do it. And they're crying and upset. And, and then the senior who knows their rights. Oh, really? <laughs> Keep on talking and give me your name because my lawyer is going to sue you big time. <laughs> but I it's, think fun to, it's fun to know your rights. It's fun. It, it, to, it makes it, you feel good. It's fun. Did you hear that? It's fun to know your rights. And so that's why we are doing this uh, program is so that you can know your rights. And we hope that it empowers some people to go out and take a positive action because we've heard horror stories of people who didn't know their rights, who were, who were um, they've almost been bullied. And I say that word very strongly, but they don't even know that they've been bullied because they don't know their rights. And then fraud comes in. And so those are some other pieces that we won't get into today. But so Linda, you're, you're up. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's talk more about what your rights are. But first, let's remind people who are watching live to send in their questions. We have questions, but we want to hear more from you if you have other questions. So uh, one question we have is, so I pay rent, I have a landlord, and I need repairs done. And they're essential repairs I need done. It's not little, I need something hung up, but I need a repair done. And they don't do the repair. If I do the repair... Can I deduct that from my rent? Or mm. if they refuse to do a repair I need, can I refuse to pay rent? Well, those are two different questions. Generally, you may not just deduct repairs from the rent. 
um, if you don't get prior permission. A lot of people do think that though, and they only have this much money and they use it for the repair and then they don't have enough for the rent mm -hmm. and then they are going to be in trouble and the landlord's going to get a windfall. So you have to get prior approval. And I would say in writing, even if it's a chat or a text, something in writing, sure, sure, go ahead and do that, deduct it from the rent. Um, on the other hand, if the landlord wh whose obligation it is to do those repairs does not, then you can do a legal written rent withholding and we can assist you with that. And it's on our website, how to do it on your own if you don't want us to. But it's literally got to be essential repairs, like you said, a code violation, a code enforcement problem. There's a whole list we can go over with you. But it's like you can just say, well, I'm just going to hold on to my rent then until you do it. And then see if they don't go, well, go ahead and do it then. <laughs> Deduct it from the rent. Who knows what the landlord would say, but it gets the job done where, again, you're empowered and you assert your rights. But hold on to the rent, though. Don't spend it on something fun. <laughs> as soon as the repairs are done, you got to pay up. <laughs> but I think, I think the key here is recognizing that you just can't take it into your own hands. Exactly. And that um, there, are, there are protocols and processes in place. And so once you get the information and knowledge, now you're responsible to it and for it. And so that is, I think, a really important piece. And so this is really, really good and uh, is helping, I hope, a lot of people with legal myths. So we've covered a, a, a lot today and we may have uh, to bring you back again because there are so many good questions. Do you have other pieces or things or other topics that you could uh, address that are just burning myths that you hear and see all the time? You know, the, the burning myths I see the most, especially with seniors, like you said, are about creditors, debt collection, what what creditors can and cannot do. When I have someone that calls me, you know, and I have these sweet, this one senior just lost her husband. She calls me from the hospital. Her pacemaker has gone out from the stress because creditors were calling her night and day saying, I'm going to take the wedding ring off your finger. I am going to come in and take your grandmother's china out of your house. I am going to, I'm going to throw you in jail. Literally, this woman was in her late 80s, just lost her spouse. This was all debt from him and from his medical, horrible, long, involved medical stuff. And she calls me so sad because she had signed over her SSI check and mailed it to them. Oh and they God. had cashed it and she couldn't pay her little rent. And she even was in a rent controlled. I mean, you know, we had, but we were on it. One, I said, you just stop listening to these people. Never answer the phone again. She didn't even know she didn't have to answer the phone. She thought she had to answer the phone and take their abuse. And it was just putting her in such a state. No, they cannot take your house. No, they cannot throw you in jail. No, they cannot take your Social Security or SSI. They cannot take your retirement benefits. They cannot take your life insurance. They cannot take your home furnishings. They cannot take almost anything. What I said to her is, you know who should be up late at night with their heart going out? The creditors, because you're not getting, it. You're not getting any of your money. You can't pay it. It's, you don't have to pay it. I mean, it just broke my heart that she was trying to hide her wedding ring with a neighbor because they said they were coming to get it. And she was crying on the phone to me. This is all I have left of him. You know, we were together 75 years. I mean, wow. can you believe, you know, I always say there must be a circle in hell for these people on the phone that are, you know, debt collectors, the things they say, they're completely illegal to say they're horrible. But then here's the million dollar question. Oh, I am going to sue those people. Who was it? Who? Give me a name. Give me a. What do you think she said? Honey, she I don't know who it was. I don't know who it was. I'm just crying. And so, again, how can I sue the air? <laughs> right? I yes. mean, so what I want to do is get in early. I want to get in early with seniors. That's what we want to do at Legal Aid. Give them the knowledge before they lose their spouse, before yes. they put someone on their deed, before they stick a kid on their bank account, before they sign their SSI check over, before, right? Because right. before is power. It's like coming in stage four cancer. You know, we could have taken it off like three stages ago and you'd be fine. <laughs> Don't wait, right? Don't wait. There's information out there. It's easily accessible. And ask a lawyer, not your friend, 
not the person I spoke to last night, eight o'clock at night. I called her back because she was in such a state. I heard there's eminent domain over my house because my daughter, I mean, no, no, no. I don't know who she was talking to. And they chat it up online or they get it from the internet. Talk to a lawyer. And by the way, you should cover how people can afford us. Yes, that's a, that's a great question. <laughs> Do tell. How can they afford us? We're absolutely free. Absolutely wow. free. I don't know what more we can do, but be accessible, have helplines, hotlines, answer the phone, go to the community. Please, we're out here. We want to help. That's why we're here. That's what we're for. And it's absolutely free. Please call us. So, so um, I, thank you for that, too. Could you give us a couple of areas that you might not cover? Or that, I just say they should call and ask first. But are there some areas that just are general that you don't cover? Yeah, good question. You know, if the if the private bar, and by that I mean private lawyers, not uh, public interest lawyers at legal aid, private lawyers are begging for the case, that's a good indication. We're not competing for that. So when you see a billboard, <laughs> have you been injured? We want to talk to you, <laughs> free consultations. You know, we're not going to fight for a personal injury case, right? When there's people that want to do your case, we're happy for them to do it. So what we're trying to do is the stuff that really is around you know, poverty related stuff, people that are low income, people in vulnerable groups that maybe don't have all the money to go to a private lawyer or get these consultations from lawyers. But they're, you know, they're welcome to call if they're over 60, any income and asset, because they also have to know where to go to get accurate, complete information mm -hmm. without someone having to trying to sell them something. Right. So if you call me and I sell wills for a living and trusts, and you say, do I need a will and a trust? <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> I'm not trying to bust on the private bar, but you know, when, when your business is by doing, then, you know, if you have a hammer, everything's a nail, right? <laughs> you have, you have the right to call legal aid because under the elder Americans act, which we so adore, you get to go somewhere where there's accurate, good information, no sales pitch and someone that just gives you the straight scoop. You know, you can trust us because we're not selling anything. If we do a will for you, it's free anyway. <laughs> so if we do one for you, it's because you need one, right? Not because we wanted to sell you one. <laughs> so I love the private bar and they volunteer and they're great people, but it's good to call us or to go to us too, just to, you know, have your, have your accurate information. I think it's a good resource to know about. And if you're a caregiver, so if you're an older adult, 60 and older, you mentioned the Older Americans Act. Also, if you're a caregiver, Absolutely. An adult, if a caregiver has a question about legal issues related to their loved one, maybe they're a son or a daughter and they have some questions, they too can contact you. Exactly. And In then, fact, I always tell people, don't figure out what we do and don't do. Just call. We'll tell you if we do it. You don't need to memorize them all. <laughs> and we'll tell you why we do it or don't do it. We're happy to talk to people. So one more, what, at least one more question um, that's a burning question, uh, because we face this out all the time. Seniors going into nursing homes uh, and their spouse is at home and they're afraid to... Um, what's going to happen to their spouse at home and are, are, will they be homeless? You know, will they have to spend down and sell their home to pay for the nursing home care? Talk to us about that. Such a good question. This is probably my most popular lecture at the COA. When I say nursing home, Medicaid eligibility rules, income and asset limits, the room is packed. It's like I'm a rock star that day <laughs> because, yes, it's very important if you have to do that scenario, which nobody wants to, but it does become necessary for proper care. Sometimes you have to know the information in advance again before you spend all your money down and all your assets down to that two thousand dollars. Everyone's got it in their head. They can only have two thousand dollars. It's not true. The stay at home spouse, we call it the community spouse gets to keep the home of up to 500,000, a car of any value, burial funds, um, you know, another 115,000 in cash on top of that. They get to keep all kinds of things because they're still in the community and they need to survive on that. And even the amount of money, the, the, the income that the spouse in the nursing home is taking with, they can actually ask the court to issue to them 
because they're still in the community. They still have the grandkids' birthdays and bar mitzvahs and Christmas, and they still have the normal couple responsibilities, and they can get the assets and income of the entire couple. So it's very important for the community spouse and the spouse going in, either one, both can come in and get that information. And so that when they apply, it's not such a big, scary thing. What you don't want to do is guess on the rules or start transferring or trying to hide stuff. No, no, no. Know your information. Act legally. Be honest. Just know what the rules are. And you know what Jerry Seinfeld said? He said, you know, you're all playing a board game and then something comes up and no one knows. Only the lawyers have read the box. Only the lawyers. <laughs> the lawyers know the rules. We read the box. We know the rules. <laughs> so here's where you go. <laughs> you don't have to guess. Take a poll. You know, ask your friends at the laundromat. No, just call us. We've read the box. <laughs> we love it. And again, I because I, there are so many more questions. I really want to figure out how we can have you back on a long on a longer forum and um because this is so valuable, especially in light of where we are in our communities. And so we really appreciate you being here. And thank I would you love so that. Much. A regular, I'm popular, come, like on Saturday Night Live, I can be a regular character. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you so much. Give us your uh, website and phone number again where people can call. Jackslegalaid.org. Jacks okay. Jala. JacksonvilleAreaLegalAid.org, and every every number out there, the best one to call is that Florida Legal Helpline, and they have all of our offices, our resources, our numbers, and they also can answer the first quick questions to get your heart rate down. 888-895-7873. It's good to have that quick case. It takes us a few hours. They're right there on the phone waiting and standing by. It has been such a pleasure to have another forum to get to reach people and to tell them that God's honest truth is so <laughs> helpful because all these myths are just killing people in the public. And they it just keep exactly. spreading these rumors. And it's, 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 this is like the era of the most misinformation on yes. every level I've ever seen. And it's, they, they will, they will argue with me about it. No, no, honey. I know I've heard this from my friends and I say, well, I'm a lawyer. And so you can believe them or you can believe me. I, you know, I can argue yeah. with you, but you really need to listen to lawyers. And if I'm wrong, I'm covered. I got malpractice coverage. If your friend's wrong, you're just sunk. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a great, That's a great I believe you. I trust you. I thank you for today. Yeah wonderful having you on our show it's been Thanks. a great program and we look forward to having you again hopefully sometime and thanks to everyone else for joining us today remember uh we'll be doing this let's do lunch again next month it's the third thursday at 12 30 and we look forward to seeing everybody then with another wonderful topic wonderful thank you so much thank for having you me so much, everyone